Whatever the truth, what was the reason for the eviction? To landowners like Lord and Lady Stafford, the way their land was being farmed was inefficient. It wasn't producing enough income. The Highlanders could not pay any more rent. But the land could be made more profitable by combining small holdings to make larger farms or by using the land for another purpose. The textile industry was expanding. Demand for wool was growing. There was money to be made in sheep farming. Landowners in Scotland began using their land for this. The farms needed just a few shepherds, which meant most of the existing tenants would have to leave. Some went without protest. It was getting harder to make a living if they stayed. Others were compulsorily evicted. In Strathnava, Sutherland, where Patrick Seller evicted the Chisholms, some of the evicted families were resettled in the new town of Helmsdale. But most left the Highlands forever, either moving to the Lowlands or emigrating. Between 1800 and 1860, a quarter of a million people either chose or were forced to leave the Highlands. In the 1840s, thousands left during a natural disaster which devastated the agricultural communities in both the Highlands and in Ireland. The events in Ireland were witnessed by two English gentlemen, Lord Dufferin and the Honourable George Boyle. In 1847, they published an account of their visit to Skibbereen in the west of Ireland. Almost the first thing we saw on entering the town were nine or ten deal coffins. Round the inn door were crowded numbers of the most wretched beings one had ever beheld. Not so much clamouring for assistance as looking on in listless inactivity. The houses were mere hovels, dark and dismal in the inside, damp and filthy to the most offensive degree. We stood on the threshold and looked in. The walls were bare, the floor of mud, and not a vestige of furniture. The poor have pawned nearly every article of furniture which they possess in order to obtain food. Over a small fire, a woman was crouching, drawing her only comfort from its scanty warmth. She was suffering from diarrhoea. From what we could gather, there appeared to be several other human beings in different corners of the hovel, but in the darkness we were totally unable to distinguish them. The coach was to pass through Skibbereen at 10 o'clock, but upon its arrival, we found it full. However, we determined to hurry on by any conveyance, as we'd seen quite enough. We succeeded in hiring a jaunting car. While that was being prepared, we sent out for an immense basket full of loaves, intending to distribute them to the starving beings we were sure to meet by the way. But some of the people of the town had learned our intention and gathered in a great crowd under the window. A hundred or two hundred, mostly women. It was a frightful sight to see those pale, eager faces staring up at us, uttering all manner of entreaties. Of course, there was no hope of carrying off the bread. Indeed, it would have been cruel. The only question was how to divide it. At first, we sent it down to the door. But the rush was so great, that became impractical. It only remained to throw it out of the window. One can never forget what followed. The fighting, the screaming, the swaying to and fro of the human mass as it rushed in the direction of some morsel. The gestures and entreaties by which each one sought to attract our attention to herself. And above all, the insatiable expression of the crowd as it remained undiminished and unsatisfied at the exhaustion of our loaves. What were they, among so many? Between 1845 and 1850, Ireland suffered a series of disastrous famines, known together as the Great Famine. 